In the previous video, I featured HS-STAN. It's a DIY affordable solution for work supports for dynamic balancing. But work supports are half of the equation. Dynamic balancers require measuring instruments. And that's where HS-ADXL comes in. It picks up where Martin Lawrence HS-ACC DIY project left off. It consolidates everything into one new repo called HS-ADXL on my GitHub and which Martin will mirror. And it takes the project up a notch. It's graduated to a laser instead of the infrared reference sensor. So the motherboard for HS-ADXL lives in here. It shares the same box as the motor control and the same 24 volt supply. Motherboard is held in position with this Gorilla double adhesive tape. So this is the main board PCB for the project. And sometimes uh, just the sight of a PCB can intimidate some people. Uh, not to worry on this project. This is straight up solder iron work. There are no SMD components to be flowed on here. It's just a matter of soldering some headers for the SP32 board and to solder the pins of these RJ45 connectors. By the way, when sourcing these RJ45 connectors, look for that telltale chrome border on there. Uh, they're the right size for this project. And the ESP32 module just plugs in. All in the same repo, you're going to find the flash download tool to be able to put the firmware in here. It's going to look like this. Very straightforward process to flash these chips. This small MP1584 DC to DC converter which steps down the 24 volts to the 5 volts required by the ESP32 is also secured to the bottom of the box with this double adhesive Gorilla tape. And then of course we need to prepare two ADXL345 digital accelerometers. And then it's a matter of assembling the ADXL345 accelerometer and the RJ45 connector onto that small PCB. We start off by soldering the RJ45 connector to that small PCB. Okay, so here's a small tip. To help hold the ADXL345 board while we solder it, I've got a couple of layers of that double adhesive tape on the back of the RJ45 here, like so, which makes this soldering here much easier to do. And of course, we're going to need two units. So this uh, E6000, okay, that's what I kind of like to fill the cavity here. The nozzle really helps to get in there. The only downside is that this stuff takes uh, at least a day, if not two, to cure. But uh, that's okay. It, it's still the best thing to use. To get maximum strength out of the magnets, rotate them around. until they want to connect like this. And that's the way they go into their respective cavities. Maximum strength achieved this way. And to secure the small magnets on the bottom, I'm going to be using this JB Well plastic bonder. So here's another tip when gluing the magnets. Have a flat piece of steel like this to help line them up. Now there's lots of E6000 adhesive inside this cavity, but I didn't fill it all the way up to the edge here because that stuff is kind of stringy and uh, difficult to leave a nice look. So this was finished with that same plastic bonder epoxy that is holding the magnets. And we need to use these ultra thin, very flexible ethernet cables. There cannot be any resistance to this movement. And they plug in here. Bananas are for the motor controller output. And that brings us to the laser connection. So the wiring is pretty straightforward in there. 
and well illustrated in this diagram. There were quite a few lasers to choose from on the internet, but they had really slow response times, like three milliseconds, five milliseconds. So I was able to find this model, which gives us less than one millisecond, which is good for this work. But it's a bit unconventional in the sense that instead of just projecting a dot, it projects this horizontal line. Turns out it's not a problem. As soon as this silver tape crosses the path of that horizontal line, we get the desired notch on our waveform. And these are the notches created by the tape interrupting the laser. We're going to anchor our 360 degree overlay to two of those notches. So this is oscilloscope-based dynamic balancing. Right? It relies on these sine waves here that are generated by the uh, oscillation of the uh, accelerometers. And we want very clean sine waves like this. And how do we achieve that with very inexpensive ADXL345 accelerometers? Well, one is the firmware that Martin Lauren wrote. And then there's also the software that's within 8-scope here. But one of the biggest thing is the filters that are built into 8-scope. In particular, the bandpass filter, which we use for this, like this. And without it, and without it, that's what the waveform would look like. See on that yellow trace? Put it back on. Bandpass. And it's all cleaned up. We can work with that. A silico-based dynamic balancing doesn't tell us so much weight at a certain spot. It tells us the intensity of the vibration measured in G-forces and so many degrees from the laser reference mark. For example, the yellow trace, which is a left stand, is telling us that we're light at 170 degrees and that the intensity was 88 milli-Gs. So this is zero degrees, right? 90, 180, so that's 170. We could use a protractor if you like, but I can also just eyeball that. So it's saying that it is light right here. We need to add some weight. We don't know how much weight. So I got two little screws here. I'm going to put those in. If it's too much, we'll take one out. If it's not enough, we'll add another one. It's not complicated. And this side had the same intensity, but it's at 280 degrees. So this would be 270, right? Add another 10, that's 280. It's light right here. We'll give that another spin and see what it says. There we go. Anchored our overlay. Okay. So we made a lot of progress, right? We now 0.24 G, where we had 0.88 G, okay? 125 degrees, it's light. I'll add one more of these little screws. And a screw at 300 degrees on the right. Let's do another spin. Point zero five G for the right, 
0.07 G there. I could go and make that 0 0.01, 0 0.02, all right? A little bit more messing around, but um, we're done here. And this was the unbalanced. We have three screws here on this plane. And three screws over here on this plane. So I highly recommend if you're tempted into any of this, that you start off with a test rotor like this, that you get confidence in the machine and the equipment, and you get confidence in yourself prior to starting to balance, you know, crankshafts and uh, other rotors, okay? So you'll find in the description links to the GitHub HS-ADXL repository as well as the HS-STAND repository. Thanks for watching guys.